Good morning. It's Saturday morning, November the 5th, and here we are again. We get to have the privilege of worshiping our King, our God, the the Lord Most High, and, I, and I'm just so grateful for, for Jesus, so grateful for the, our Father who's in heaven, so grateful Holy Spirit dwells amongst us and, and dwells within us. And so we just say, Abba, we welcome you in this place. Jesus, you are always welcome. You're living within, and Holy Spirit, have your way this morning. So we bless we bless this time that we get to be together, and I, I'm so grateful also for our Father's heart um, group that comes out and makes the make, extends themselves to come from Winnipeg to be with us and to to link arms together with us as we as we can walk in this kingdom together, building. His kingdom and definitely stirring up the sands here at Holy Spirit Sands in Carberry, and I'm grateful also Dale that and for all the ones who everybody that has come together to labor. So we're we just want to say thank you to each and every one of you, you know, and Sarah, you know, looking after the coffee and the waters and such, and and Marlene, you know, with our worship uh, worship team, you know, just everybody. Everybody just giving and giving and giving of themselves, but it's giving to Jesus, and you know we all are here to serve our King. And so I'm just going to um, we're going to open with a, I'm just it's a it's a prayer, sort of a devotional reading, and it's um, prayers that touch the heart of God. So it's entitled Overcomer, and we are all overcomers, right? So, Father, your word says that I am, we are, overcomers because of the blood of the Lamb and the Lord Jesus Christ, the word of our testimony, that in Jesus all the fullness of the deity dwells bodily, and, and I and we have been given fullness in Christ, and we share his authority over every spiritual power and authority. But we would each confess that we do not feel like overcomers at times. We may not feel it in our emotions, but that doesn't change the fact that we are. Um, yeah, and that we may sometimes give in to the influence of the world instead of our submission to Christ. So God, save save me from myself. May I be a may may I be full of your spirit and your mighty power, the power of the resurrection. Teach me and. Teach us and use me, use us, Lord God, that we might be the one who sees strongholds demolished in our lives and to help others to walk in freedom. Thank you, Father, that because I belong to you in Christ, in Christ Jesus, Lord, you surround us with your presence, that you are a wall of fire around us, O Lord. You are our refuge and our strength. You are our high tower. In every situation and struggle, you are with each one of us. And we will not be afraid for my trust, our trust, is in your name. And like Joshua, may I be confident, O oh God, that you are with me and with us and will never leave or forsake us. By your spirit at work in me, by your spirit at work in us, make us to be strong and courageous, to not be afraid or discouraged, but always mindful that you are with us. You are with us wherever we go. Use us to take back the ground that the enemy has stolen, and we're taking it back. Yeah. We are taking it back because we are overcomers. We are the ones who are in the authority over this land and over this place in Jesus' name. We are in Treaty 1 territory and land and by, by, because of the blood of Jesus that connects us. Yeah. Brothers and sisters in Jesus, we can have the authority. To we speak to this land and we say, it's coming back, and it's on its way back to us now in the name of Jesus Christ. It is given back to us. And so, Lord, you are with us. We will not be afraid, but we trust that you're bringing all, all those camels, all those dromedaries, ha, they're coming in for each and every person here and whomsoever is joining us, whether live or later. You'll still be live then. <laughs> Maybe not on, t you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so help each one of us to be self-controlled and alert. You better be, right? <laughs> Knowing that the end of my soul is prowling, prowling and looking for an opportune moment. But that old 
that old uh, enemy, he's got no teeth. He might growl and try to make a bunch of noise. He's got no teeth, so he's a toothless, yappy thing. Well, again, you know, under my feet. And in Jesus' name, strengthen each one of us to submit to you, Lord, to resist that enemy and to stand firm in our faith, to stand firm in the faith of God, that we have faith of God, and, and we our faith in him, but also of him. Give to us each one, I pray, Lord God, your perspective of the situations that we face. Our own perspective might be a little bit clouded. It might not be what how God's seeing things. So, Lord, give us your perspective for the situations that we may face, that we could live victoriously as that conqueror that you've caused us to be because of Jesus and his love, his great love for each of us. May we be full of faith and your word. Get that word. Get that word. Don't stray from the word of God. And so it's already written in your hearts, but keep reinforcing that that faith and that word working together. For we belong to you, Lord. We belong to you, Lord Jesus, and you have overcome the world. In Jesus' name. So, with those who are, we're going to be worshiping and leading us into the presence, it's sort of a, okay, whomsoever <laughs> kind of day, but Dale has been prepared. And um, so, so we just say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your minstrels. Thank you, Lord. We we'll just bless each one in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? Who taught the ocean you can only come this far? And who showed the
you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'll try this song. Thinking of Pastor Ray here. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Here I am before you, falling in love and seeking your truth, knowing that your perfect grace has brought me to this place. Because of you, I freely live my life to you, oh God, I give, so I stay. to hear where Pastor Raymond was. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'll try another song. Thank you. 
<laughs> Thank you, Lord. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no Redeemer, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, thank you, God. You called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll try this song. By Johnny Curtis, late Apache singer. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you've done so much for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Lord, you've done so much for me. I can never repay. I will never give you up. Because you mean too much to me. that you've done and he means so much to us thank you Lord everything we need is in him hallelujah thank you Lord I'll sing Sar Shalom this is a song that came to me in 2011 to write the Hebrew names of God thank you Lord thank you Lord Adonai Elohim El Shaddai El Shaddai Ruach HaKodesh Adonai Elohim El Shaddai El Shaddai 
Spirit, his salvation, the anointed one, yeah. Prince of Peace. The Lord is there. The Lord is my righteousness. The Lord is our righteousness. Yeah. God is with us, and the Lord is my banner. Yeah. The Lord is my miracle. Yes, <laughs> and it says, God will provide. God will see to it. Amen. Because he's the Lord of peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sing with me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. There is not like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. Oh, there is none like for all eternity long and find there is none like you your mercy flows like a river wide and healing comes in your name helpless children Um, you know, we're 
last night where Fred has offered to help navigate us through um, times of testimony and reflections and what has the Lord been doing in this time since we've come to this conference or, you know, along the way here. And just... Just... Oh, well, anyway, I'm a hot mess, but that's okay because it's a God mess. You know, when I was just sitting here now and through this worship, and what the Lord was showing me, and I thought, oh, Jesus, he's so good. He's so, so good. You know, anybody that's been around us for any time, you'll know, probably heard my race say, uh, you know, when we were still out in B.C. many years already, many years ago, how we knew that somehow, you know, there's this unfulfilled call to work with God's people of the land with the need of brothers and sisters. And it wasn't happening, and it wasn't happening, and, you know, 25 years go by. But here we are. And, and, and when we first, you know, moved back here, you know, I mean, God is so much smarter than we are. But, you know, like, um, it was like, you know, okay, my parents were getting older and needed somebody around and so on and so um, yeah, so, but the thing is, you know, when I was, a, when I was much younger and not quite so wise, um, you know, and how we can all make those times where we make these inner vows that have to be broken and let go of. But when I was much younger, <laughs> God's got such a sense of humor, um, I said, I will never move back to Carberry and I will never live in my parents' house. Well, guess what? <laughs> And and they were still alive, you know, and the first year we came back was in their basement in the town of Carberry. And oh my goodness, the struggle that I had. But God in his mercy, Amen. in his mercy. Amen. And now, and now, I just so, how the Lord, I'm so grateful. Because here in Carberry, the purpose he brought us back for is right here, right now, in this moment and in this time, for that so we can work. And, and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for Pastor Raymond and Jean and all you guys that have just, you know, have, have embraced us. But, but God's given us such a heart back and forth. And, I, and I'm so moved every time. I love hanging with you guys, and it's more so much more relaxing. So much, more, it's just so much easier. <laughs> it's so much easier. Becky and I had that conversation this morning before she had to leave. Um, but it's just so much easier than what we've typically been used to in other settings, shall we say? Uh, I mean, God's got his people exactly where he needs them and wants them, no matter what our backgrounds are. But he's got his people. But I'm so, so grateful that he has hit, that he has knit our hearts through his blood. And I, I, I just, I thought, yes, this is my testimony. This is my testimony that my God is so amazing. He, he knows how to get us exactly where we need to be in this place and in this time and what he's doing in the earth, what he's doing from here and on. And then as, as Pastor Raymond was sharing about, you know, all of this from Manitoba and the sand hills north and south and everywhere. And, and it's like, God, God, you are what a miracle working God. So that's, thank you, friends. I'll let you take over now. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's a crisp morning out there, but it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful outside. Dolly and uh, and uh, Pastor Ray were the first ones up in, into the uh, into the uh, restaurant. So when they were looking out the window, they're uh, they're saying to themselves, "What are we doing in the middle of nowhere?" <laughs> <laughs> so 
But you know what? There's there's been a lot a lot happening in the middle of nowhere here, and uh, we we are in Carberry. My name is Frederick Moose. Those of you that uh, who are tuning in on the live uh, feed, uh, I'm from a small community in northern Manitoba, approximately 12 hours straight north of Winnipeg. It's called South Indian Lake. We've become our, our own reserve in 2005. We were originally from Nelson House, but now we, uh, we have our own reserve called Opiponapiwin. Oh, sure. oh, yeah. That was the original term that they used when they, our, our grandfathers started to build the community, their cabins. And Pipun, like some of us that we understand Pipun, me, it means winter. And a piwin is a settlement. So Pipona Piwin, the original name is Winter Settlement. I was born and raised uh, 90, 90 kilometers, about 90 miles north north of the uh, of that community because our my dad used to go further north to trap and fish up that way. And my auntie was a midwife, and uh, I was born in the and the trap line, on the trap line in a tent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was born two, mu two months early. I was in a hurry to, I was early, in a hurry to come into this world. I, I, don't, I don't know why. <laughs> Only God knows why. <laughs> but you know that uh, being born on the land, being raised in the community there, I learned, I learned a lot about uh, living off the land and uh, about uh, our culture, our traditions. And uh, growing up in the transition period too, there was a, there was a, a flooding that, that, that came through our, our lands there, through the Churchill River diversion through Manitoba Hydro. We've been devastated that way. And the other way that we have been devastated is the uh, residential school the assimilation factor. But throughout all that, you know, our people, our people uh, are very resilient people. We learn, we learn to survive, we learn to thrive, and we're still here. You know, they, they tried to, well, pretty much eradicate us, to destroy our ways, and, you know, the genocide. But uh, we're still here. We're still here. And some people, some people to this day, it's 2022 right now, right? Right? Yeah. Yes. We're in, we're in the uh, 21st century. You know, live, there's a lot of comments going around on Facebook today because some people are still so ignorant. Believe it or not, an ABC newscaster yesterday referred to our people as indigenous creatures. Oh, dear Jesus. No. God. Yes. It's going around Facebook. And, that, and there was a clip on there. So we really need to, uh, really, really need to, to pray for these people that, like that, you know, because we're trying, we're trying to, to come together, you know, in the eyes of God, we're all brothers and sisters, no matter what color our skin is, we all still bleed red, you know. Unless you're you're a predator in the movie where, where your blood is neon green, you know, it's only in the movies, you know. But we gotta accept accept each other for for who we really are, children of God, right? Yes. And uh, I just wanted to um, share a little bit of that with you, with you, and. Uh, Kind of like from my, my own perspective, being being an indigenous Cree man, mm -hmm. born and raised, you know, on the land. That's that's how I am. I came to I came to accept my my own ways, and I came I came like when I when I went into my education, I came to accept mainstream society. I came I came to accept people like Robert. He's my brother. You know, we're we're very different. We're very different people, right, Robert? Robert is unique, and I'm unique. You know, but we accept each other as brothers. That's that's my brother, Robert. Yeah. 
I have a, a, a Vietnamese brother in Brandon. His name is Van B. Lee. I was very close to that man when I went to college in, uh, in Brandon. He's Vietnamese, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, Aboriginal. But, uh, you know, some of us, we have those features, eh? And my buddy would, would forget, you know, he would forget that he, and he'd start talking to me in Vietnamese. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got so we got so used to being around each other there. Yeah, he was my uh, he was my mechanic initially, and then he ha he was running a school, a taekwondo school, and I became his student. And then we 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 got to know each other so well. And then uh, he had projects, and uh, I started to work for him, and that's how that's how I got through uh, through college, to ma maintaining my vehicle. I would work for him to pay off my repairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know those uh, those those relationships that we build, right? And the bonding, and uh, and no matter who we are, right? No matter what color our skin, our our backgrounds, you know. I have I have black people that uh, that are my brothers, also my sisters, you know. That's just that's just who I am, you know. I don't have any prejudice or you know against anybody. And um, going back to uh, my my home community, one of you in Cree Nation, South Indian Lake, I I I, uh, I was very active in the community. I, I always uh, worked for my my community in the professional capacity in management and other things. And uh, I got into leadership, and I was uh, part of the the very when we became our own reserve. I was part of the very first. First elected band band council chief and council. I served a four-year term, but they went through a lot. Went through a lot there during that transition as well. You know, people were um, we were so used to being under the provincial government, and all of a sudden we're <laughs> under the federal government. We talked about principalities. You know, like uh, when I when I heard when I used to hear that term. You know, I. Uh, Right away, that's what I thought, you know. I, I thought that, that principalities, municipalities, you know, there was, there was, there was something there. There were, there were things that, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a reflection. There were things that, that came to me that uh, I didn't understand, but, but the Lord was directing these, these things to me. And that, and that was one of them, because uh, we were, it was such a, it was such a, conflicting life that we were living we were apart from our own reserve but uh, the, the the council from Nelson I was used to come and they used to look after us right there was a portfolio holder and then when the church river diversion kicked in we were we were flooded and all of a sudden we were uprooted and moved on the other side to a, to a new community and then we're all of a sudden we're a, we're a, a mayor and council we're a local. We're a local municipality, and yet at the same time we're all treaty, but our treaty rights are not being acknowledged. We were paying taxes. We were paying land taxes. With everything, you know, like, like, like you guys in Carberry, right? This is a local municipality, and that's how we were being treated. You know, it was it was very, it was very, it was always very very conflicting. <laughs> We, a lot of people were confused about that, and I think that's what that's what happens in the world. Yes. People become very confused, and you know, even people say, you know, they'll say, "I know my rights," but their rights are are not being acknowledged. You know, when we when we when we were coming into um, Carberry and uh, we're looking at the program, me and my wife were looking at it, and I said, "Isn't that?" Isn't that awesome? I said, this is, uh, this is all a part of what, what we're learning, what we're being taught, the theme, ecclesia, right, yeah. you know, exactly right. yes. it's like, it's like the original church. A lot of people, a lot of people, when we first started uh, doing this and Ray Raymond was, was teaching us, he was not only preaching to us, he was teaching us, he was mentoring us. You know, we started to understand. We didn't understand. I didn't understand that word ecclesia. 
my wife, my wife and Auntie Rose were laughing at me when I, I, I thought he was saying Equasia. Oh. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> they were laughing. What did you say? I said Equasia. <laughs> it's the Ecclesia. <laughs> and it, uh, and then uh, what it, what it, what it, how I understand it now. It's like. Uh, it's like it's like being in 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 a leadership pos position, being in a leadership role. What the responsibility is, you know, like there's a group, there's a chief, and how many how many uh, counselors? We all have to have that input and 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 direct it to our leader that or the leader will represent. But it comes, you know, the organizational structure, like the chief and council. And then you, you they branch out to the uh, the manage the management, and then but uh, but you know what we forget the people forget that they are the ones that that are on top of the chief and council. You know, it's the citizens. The citizens have have to bring their concerns to the leadership, and the leadership directs it to the to their the workers, and, it, and that's the way that's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way it should it should flow, and that's and that's I believe that's the same way that uh, the original ecclesia. That's how it was directed, you know, because the people the people have to have the input, you know, and they gathered right. And then the core group, the legislative govern, governing authority, would take that into consideration, right? And then they would decide. It's like taking a vote. The, ve the people would have to agree. Yeah. You know, it was it was a system that worked. When the denominational system came in, you know, with the ecclesia, right? There was there was, it was like one church. When the denominational system. It comes came in. That's when the confusion started. And people would say, "Well, you know, my God is greater than your God. You know, our church is more powerful than your church. You know, they start they start fighting each other. They start bashing each other. And it still goes on. You know, it all the old the old laws and not the old laws, but uh, some the way that." Uh, the way the church, the church was run, mm -hmm. the new, the new church, the new name was was church, right? <laughs> yeah, right. They boxed the people in. Exactly. Yeah, Amen. and the way it was run, it was very, they ran it very, very. Uh, it was all religion, yeah. man-made, yeah. but the man-made laws, exactly. man-made rules. Mm -hmm. You know, and I believe that's what emptied the church. Mm -hmm. The church fell asleep, lost interest. You know, and now now we're uh, we're we're coming into a, like a crisis situation, especially with uh, with our young people. There's a lot of a lot of our our young people that are are lost in alcohol, in drugs, and there's a lot of communities uh, losing their young people through suicide and you know. People freeze to death. People drown. You know, there's. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say this right now, but maybe I'll share it after. Um, there's tragedies happening. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes. When uh, when I was when I was back home, I, I worked with the church. I worked. I was uh, I was raised uh, in the Catholic Church. I was baptized in the Catholic Church, and I was raised in the Catholic Church. And I continue. I continue there. And I worked with the, the fathers that were coming through there. And uh, there was my first cousin. His name is Lawrence. Lawrence Dumas. He was he was really faithful in working with me. And uh, we we host community events like a coffee house and uh, activities. And we would do different themes. We would do a gospel music night. We would. We would do a country music night. We would do a jigging, square dancing, you know, communi community social activities. And we were teaching these young kids, too, to play music. Our fiddler, our fiddle player was a 13-year-old girl. And she, was, she did really well. We, we, we were teaching her how to keep time and, you know, with the, with the, with the music. 
and we did we did so well we did so good and we also helped with the Sunday services and uh, things like that but it was it was uh, it got to be so so hard on us because uh, you know we people we we don't even get the the interest of the people for just for a little while especially with the church just for a little while, and then everybody would go back to doing what they were doing. Yeah. And then we were we were thinking. We said, "What are we gonna? You know, what are we? What are we gonna do? How are we gonna? You know, to keep our people on the, on the right path? Mm-hmm. You know. That was that was the purpose. Why why we were doing these activities? We were trying to stabilize our 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 community members. You know to let them know that there was, there was something better than alcohol, something yeah. better than yeah. drugs, you know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was good. They would come out, you know, in the winter time, people are stuck inside most of the time because of the bitter cold. They would come and, you know, it would be a good physical activity for them, a good social activity, you know, with the other community members. But then we thought, you know, what what can we do? What is there? What is there to do? And then one time, one time we were listening to a, a gospel jamboree, and then the the speaker kept saying, "Hallelujah, Hallelujah, the Apostolic Holy Ghost." You know, we would look at each other. What is that? I've never heard of that. The Apostolic Holy Ghost. You know. So I'm having I'm having to um, learn all these things, eh? So what I learned from my pastors, you know, like the apostolic, it, it, it is kind of like a denomination, the ap- apostolic, like one way, like the apostolic faith, and then the, and then we we're coming into now we're coming into the ecclesia, and then we're 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 becoming like a apostolic centers, yes. but we're we're in that uh, fivefold. Yes. Fivefold ministry, yes. Yes. and that 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 was that is the the apostolic, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, pastor. and the pastor, Pastor Ray. <laughs> yeah. See, in that time, this other thing that 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 the Lord had had presented to me, it 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 played around in my mind. Eh? And that was the that was the other thing that I was thinking. You know, all these all these people, they're always they're always there was in our community. There was the Baptist Church, there was the Catholic Church, there was the uh, the uh, United Church. And then I'm saying, and then I'm looking, and the Lord Lord gives me this this synopsis. That all these denominations, you know, everywhere, they all have to start coming together and work together. Yeah. You know, for the for the greater glory of God, yeah. because the, you know, no matter how many denominations, there's there's always that the same path that leads to the same God, right? Mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And then, and then, and this is where I start to understand, put it together, like with with the teachings of the ecclesia. Mm. We are all. Working together for the, for the like the body to become the the body of Christ to work to work to that 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 glory glory of God and that's how that's how I'm understanding it and that's how that's how I'm learning it that's how that's how we need that's the direction that that we need to go now the 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 Lord is 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 moving forward in in. It's a, people are referring it to as a a new way, you know. Yeah, they're, they're calling it a yeah. new way, yeah. Yeah. but you know what? It's not. No. We're ju- we're just going back to the original, the original, the original way, the original church, the ecclesia, right? Yeah. This is not. This is nothing new. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're just we're just uh, revolving. It's almost like it's almost like we're co- we're coming back to a full circle, yes. Amen. returning returning to to the ecclesia, yes. mm-hmm. you know. And uh, you know, like for me, I'm like the like the old teachings, the old church. 
I, I didn't, I didn't, I lost that fire. I lost I, that feeling. But now I'm, I'm, I'm starting, I'm feeling it again. Yeah. You know, I'm feeling that fire. Yeah. I'm feeling that fire of God. Amen. You know, I'm, 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 I'm really encouraged. Yeah. I get excited, mm. you know. Last week when we were first coming here, I was, I was so excited for Friday to come. It was, it was in my spirit, eh? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So good. Yeah. So good. yeah. And then, and then we spoke about uh, commitment last night. I think I think uh, Leslie brought that up, eh? or was it was it Ray? I mean, somebody somebody brought it up anyway. Somebody mentioned mentioned that that we have to be we have to commit ourselves. You know, we have to be consistent in what we do, no matter what. We have to we have to listen to that voice of God, that direction, because you know we 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 pray. I think most of us pray that way. Lord, give me, give me the direction. Give me guidance. You know, and a lot of times when, 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 when we're not aware of it, when we don't pay attention, God is directing us and He is guiding us, but we don't listen. You know, when we, <laughs> when we, when we don't catch it, you know. And people say we were, we were talking about uh, the story of the eagle yesterday. And how 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 painful the transition is if if the if the the eagle wants to continue, mm-hmm. you know, he has to tear out these these uh, these old feathers. Mm-hmm. He has to bash his beak against against a rock till it falls off, and then it comes. Then it grows back. Everything grows back, and they're renewed. Their li- their life their normal lifespan is what se- seven years, but then they go through that transitional process. Mm-hmm. They have an additional what thirty years. Yeah. They're able they're able to survive another thirty years, a hundred years, and you can can live up to a hundred years. Did you guys know that? No. Yeah. Then you just learn something about yourself too, because that's how we are too, you know, when we become lost. Right, yeah. Yeah. we lost. We're, you know, God is not with us. We're, we're in the world. Yeah. We're worldly people. We're, we're into lying, cheating, mm-hmm. drinking, thieving. You know, everything that goes on. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, we come, we come to a, a place in our lives where we can't. We're, we're, we're right, we're right on the bottom, bottom of the pit. Mm-hmm. And then so all of a sudden, we realize, you know. This is not the life I want. Mm-hmm. I want to make a change yeah. in my life. Yeah. And who do we look at? Who do we look at? You know, in times of crisis. Right. Now, now, mm. we cry out. We cry out to God. Yeah. And you no, know, sometimes it, it takes it takes uh, extreme circumstances. Mm-hmm. I know I had I had I had gone through that painful process myself. With what what happened to me in my life, being a being an orphan, a young man at a young age, and the turmoil I went through with with alcohol, drugs, and violence, everything that was a part of my life, and then sickness came into my life. Forty three years old, I was having a heart attack. I was at uh, Saint Boniface Hospital getting a getting a double bypass operation. I didn't, you know, have. I didn't know I was gonna whether I was gonna survive or not. You know, I was I was uh, four hours under. I was clinically dead for four hours. Wow. But you know, the the Lord still had His hand on me. Yeah. And I and I, this is where I got the real understanding of how how faithful God is. Mm-hmm. Because as a young man, around thirteen years old, I did I did give my life to the Lord as a young man. But when things started happening there, you know, I uh, I became angry at God. Mm-hmm. I had lost my father when I was 10 years old, and then after I lost my mom, a, a year later, after I gave my life to the Lord, and at 14 years old, the missionary that was working in the community, she was from the United States, she ended up running off with, with the, Tom, the town foreman, who was a married man? She broke up a family, and we were, 
we were left there holding the ball, very confused, you know. What 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 happened? You know, this lady show was showing showing us the way here, you know, the like the way like like God to live godly and you know? What happened here? And then a lot of us a lot of us were were really scattered and were really confused. A lot of uh, a lot of my peers, you know, that were better off than I was, you know, that had parents and you know, had a good home, stable home. I seen a lot of my peers get into drugs and, and get into alcohol. A lot of them have, have passed away because of it, tragically. You know, and some of them are still around, but they're they're still caught up in the same cycle. Um, I'm 55 years old, so my peers that are into that thing, they look like they're they're 80 years old. You know, the, the, they're, they're so ravaged from alcohol and drugs, you know, it's just, I feel, I feel, I feel bad for them, you know, I, but you know, I was, I was, I was, uh, I was in that, uh, I was in that cycle myself and I, I had to, uh, I had to make that personal choice, you know, because uh, I, w I was dying physically and I was dying spiritually. Yeah. So I had to go through that, that, uh, that painful process, come, come, back, come back to the Lord and, you know, come back to life. Yes, and then, and then those things now, like, like I mentioned about uh, the ecclesia and having to go through this, when uh, when when we when we saw the theme, I was so so uh, so encouraged, so so excited about it, mm -hmm. you know. And doing the live feed, and there's so many other nations tuning in. And uh, the the best news is there's like uh, I think there's one, two, three. I think this is the third. Is this the third, Dolly? Yeah. yeah. This is the third apostolic center that's coming up, and there and there's got to be more. And it's so good to hear that 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 that, that uh, we speak the same language, yes. Yes. you know. Yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> we got away from that uh, the old the old language, the old the old teaching, and uh, and and the the boxing in right. Like I don't, I know we're not. I know we're in the building right now, but we're not. We're not always. <laughs> we're 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 encouraged to go out there, just like. You know, just like like Jesus encouraged the disciples, you go out there in God's word. It says you could go out there, lay hands on the sick that they may recover. You know, it's still the same today. God is, God is faithful. God says, I would, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. And I understood that because he, he never left me, no matter what situation I was in. He never forsake me. He didn't forsake me. I'm still here. You know, he's faithful, and God still heals. He's, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He's true to his word. Amen. And this is uh, just at this point. You know, I just want to wrap up with this, and uh, and then about about uh, about commitment. You know, sometimes uh, commitment is uh, is really painful. It, it it truly is. You know, I. Right now, uh, I was having a. Sometimes I was uh, I was a little bit off. I was a little bit off on my on my on my plane too. And uh, the reason being is that my uh, my community is uh, going through a lot of uh, a lot of heartache right now since uh, a couple of weeks ago. There was uh, there was a um, tragic tragic accident, but. But it involved alcohol. And you know what I was saying, and the, these 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 men, they were they were they were my peers as well. They were not 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 much younger than me, fifty years old up to fifty four years old. And they were this the the, the men are still f they were still fishing, commercial fishing up there. And these guys got into um, drinking, and they were on the they were on the dock of the of the camp. I guess uh, these guys were brothers, all three brothers. 
one one fell in in the water and it's cold up there the water's cold so the other two the other two jumped in to help their brother but i think they were so they were so drunk and probably went into shock because of the cold water you know all three of those brothers end up dying right there and uh, they haven't brought the bo- the bodies home yet they're, they're saying thursday this thursday and that happened that happened so so tragically you know yeah. and then uh about a couple of days later my uh my first cousin her daughter got sick the night before she went into the hospital she had she had an infection stomach infection and the infection went into her kidney and put, it only took two days and she passed she passed away and then and then just uh it wasn't just was it yesterday or two two days ago right and just two days ago see there's the 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 young lady she she got her wish was to be cremated they had a small service for her in thompson on saturday and the family the family was taking it hard because they didn't you know they didn't get a, a last uh they didn't see their their uh my my uh, my first cousin there and her husband and and her ch- the other children and family friends and family they didn't they didn't get to see her and say her her uh, their last farewells so they were taking that hard but you know they had to respect her her wishes and then and then all of a sudden you know the one of the the brothers the old, the old older brother he got sick he had pneumonia but he had a heart condition too and then he sudden and then he suddenly passed two days ago he had a massive heart attack so there's something there's something me and my wife are talking about it there's something going on there's a spiritual battle going on there you know I heard I heard that there's a lot of uh, hard drugs going around in the community these these drug dealers are pushing cocaine cocaine into the community young people there's there's been like homicides with the young people I know of three of them you know people are dying tragically and they're dying young younger yeah very few times very few times that we hear today of of people passing passing away naturally you know people are, are are traumatized they're they're stuck in that cycle they don't get it they don't even get a chance to uh, get over their grief and then they're and then they're right into another tragedy you know there's something happening in the, in the spiritual realm you know something has something has to take place we have to go go into these communities you know we have to we have to start working with these communities me and my wife were talking about that i said that, yeah and I, and I said you know i was thinking about that and i said and it's just it just it amazes me i said you know and i'm you know and I, i'm 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 grieving i'm grieving for my community i feel the pain you know i'm, I'm shedding tears i'm crying my wife is comforting me because i i'm feeling that pain you know that pain that they're going through yeah and it's my family on the duma side with with the young lady and the and the young man eh? very close they're, they're actually my second cousins my first cousins kids you know in our, in in our in our um in our culture our first cousins are like our our brothers and sisters we refer to them as brothers and sisters and their children we refer to them as our as our nieces and nephews so these two that just passed that's just like that's like my niece and my nephew and that's how i always referred to them eh? and that's how they referred they called me uncle you know it's it's very sad very sad time but coming into this uh, this 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 conference that's going on you know i had to have a long long think about that and i usually get a get a lot a lot of phone calls too like with with the, like work in the music industry you know i'll get a call any time 
And I told my wife, I said, you know, even though all of this, all of this is going on, you know, the devil will always throw a snare in there. And, and you know, that's where we have to put, we have to put, put our, our foot down and, and listen to God where God is directing you. Because if we do that in the end, if we do that and we're faithful and obedient, those things are not going to happen. If we take control of the situation and we bring and we bring forth the ecclesia back into the community, bring that unity. Yes. Yes. That unity is missing. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. the threads the threads have been torn apart. We need to sew new threads that won't come apart. You know. And that's where, that's where I said to my wife, you know, I, I, uh, I wanted to make this commitment no matter, no matter if I got a call, you know. And I'm, and I'm really, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that I don't, I don't care about losing, losing people, you know. I'm, I want to be here, I want to make that commitment so I don't, I don't have to lose any more people, you know, I don't have to lose any more of my loved ones in, yeah. in such a, a tragic way, you know. We need to hold our community together. Yes. You know, and our community is, is the people. Yeah. You know, that, that's the community. The community is the people. It's how, it's how we do things. Mm-hmm. You know, the ecclesia, it's, 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 like, a, it's like a leadership, Amen. you know. We always go, people always go against leadership. But if we work together in that, in that, in that fashion, right. like the fivefold, you know, that's, we're going to bring that unity together. Amen. Amen. But we have to, we have to be committed, you know. But this is where my, even though I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going through a lot of that, a lot of that pain and a lot of that, that stress, a lot of worrying, you know. Worrying about about my community, the people you know, they're they're my friends. These are these are guys that I, I grew up with, and the, these younger ones, you know, these are this is my family. I saw these I saw these young people when they were kids. They were just kids a while ago, and and now they're gone. You know, it's heartbreaking. You know, but. Uh, but I made that. I had to make that commitment to be here because I'm I'm committed. I'm committed to to see that to see this thing through. Amen. You know. Amen. I want to be a part of this change. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank That's you, Lord. where. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Because this was this was something that uh, something that we couldn't find. Because we were still in the old ways, we were in the old wineskin, you know. The old wineskin got redundant. Same thing over and over again, and and it didn't. Uh, it, was, it wasn't effective anymore. And being boxed in, everybody was everybody was going into a building, right? Pastor Riemann teaches that. People every Sunday, people come and go. They gather in this, build, in this building. They come and go. They come and go. But is there a change in society? You know, no, no. People are just, you know, boxing themselves in. And then the 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 the, the, the best description I, I I heard about being boxed in is like you know when when we're born, right? We're 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 born in the hospital. What shape is the hospital room that we're born in? Like, you know, square. We're in a box. You know, and then we go home and we reside in this building. What shape is What shape is this building? It's a box. And then we go to work. You know, some of us we go to work. We go to work in the office. You know, what shape is this office? Yeah. And then finally, you know, when our life, we're, li- we're done with our life, when we die, where do we end up? In a box. 
Yeah. 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 It's, it's. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't want to be boxed up. <laughs> I don't want to be boxed up for the rest of my life. Ecclesia was a, was an open air thing. Yeah. Yeah. We've gone. We've gone. Where we were invited to uh, open air meetings as well. Well, it was amazing. It was amazing to see people come. They they either come there, or they're sitting in their vehicle honking their horns, and you know they they're broadcasting in the, over the air airwaves as well. But it's amazing to do the the open air concept. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The whole the whole community comes out. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, that's I, I wanted to to share about that. Uh, I'm sorry, I t I'm sorry it took long, but there was there's so so much so much to share. Yeah. But, but, yeah. But to explain that that understanding, you know, like even coming from a person like me, you know, thirty years, thirty years, I was I was thirty years playing in bars and dives. You know, when when uh, alcohol had a hold of me, drugs had a hold of me. You know, that's where I spent most of my life. <laughs> Thirty years of my life. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, you know, now I'm, I'm I'm playing I'm playing playing for the Lord. You know, I still I am still involved in like the the music industry. Like I still do entertainment, but. Uh, I, I always tell people I am I am in the world but I am not of the world. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. I've learned to do things differently. I, I respect my gift and uh, yeah. I make I make a decent living of it. But you know there's 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 certain lines I don't cross anymore. Because I had lost all 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 respect for myself when when I was when I was in the wrong wrong way, you know, and it uh, it took a toll on my body. I know I know that, I know that. But but God brought me through that, Amen. you know. He spared me. He saved my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I wanna I wanna ask uh, you know this this is a time for uh, for reflection for sharing. And, and for testimony, which, whatever you want to do, yeah. whatever you want to do, and if I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pick anybody out. I'm just gonna ask, like, if anybody wants to um, yeah, and we've share. Got, and if we, we need to, because the uh, oh yeah, our lunch is being being heated or yeah, but yeah, we can continue in that. Thing. Okay, yeah, okay, that. sure. Let's this that. afternoon. Yeah, yeah, All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just realized how, how yeah. quickly the time went. It was it was, it was only me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I find this very important because yeah. I feel that we are regaining our identity. Yes. Yes. Who are yes. you? Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. Who are you? This is what I'm feeling. Yeah. I'm feeling. Uh, this is powerful, man. He just brought me. I never heard you talk like that. <laughs> Holy! Talk about a transitional change from that old, from that old, uh, that old uh, ego. Yeah. Amen. And you know what I find is very important because we got to know as Ecclesians who we are. Yeah. How are we building? How are we building? And to build. The Ecclesia, we got to know our identity and who we are. And I, I've heard it as he was speaking. I heard God, we got to know who we are. Yeah. Stepping into the Ecclesia, stepping into the apostolic government, the apostolic church, amen. Hallelujah. We got to know our identity and who we are. Some of us don't know who we are. Amen. Leslie, you don't, didn't know, you didn't realize that God was trying to get you to know who you are through the eagle. Yeah. Same as you, Christine, come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. We are, because of, you know who we are. Right. We, we, because of our connectedness to the land, yeah. to the, to, we're, we're so sensitive to creation. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Are connected to the, 
to the land and then when it tells me who I am, it gives me, it gives me my DNA. I know who I am. Come on. Hallelujah. So I find this very important to, to carry on, to carry on. Amen. To help us to step into, into our DNA and who we are. Very important. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm very thankful for, I just have to share this. I'm all excited. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To see the transitional change, Sister Dale. The transitional change. And, and come on. And Dr. Vaughn, com commitment is painful. My daughter's in a hospital. You know what? You mentioned uh, infection in the stomach. Mm -hmm. This is my daughter right now. She just had a baby. My daughter's going on 41 years old, her first baby. She's having a lot of complications. The baby's almost two weeks old. She's in the hospital. And there, there's infection in her stomach because of the cesarean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so now this all this infection is in her stomach and they're talking of draining draining her stomach. So this was right on. I thought, God, this is you talking. <laughs> so you know what? Then she just texts me now. I'm sitting there and a text came in and she says, Mama, uh, uh, remember to ask them to pray for me. Yes. So with this, I'll talk to you later. Yes. Alexis. Alexis, let's start the trip. Fred, you want to take it and yeah. pray yep. for Alexis right now and the baby? Yeah. What's the baby's name? Yes, and the other, and the other. Well, Jean's niece. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's good. That's good to hear that, Ollie, because, uh, you know, you know, a lot of times um, some some of the people, the, the non-believers, yeah. when, they're, when they're sick, when they're sick like that, they don't, they don't, uh, you know, they just don't have it to, to turn their cares and worries over, over to God. You know, They're, they don't ask for that prayer. I know and who then, I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't know who they are because they're lost. Derek? Okay. Yeah. God, Father, we, we thank you for this day, and we, we thank you that you, you give life to us, Heavenly Father, and we, we come before you in the name of Jesus today, Heavenly Father, to uh, pray for our loved ones who are, who are sick and who are lost, Heavenly Father, and we're praying for Dolly's daughter, Alexis, who has a stomach infection in her body. Heavenly Father, and we we reach out to her spiritually, and we lay hands on her, all of us. And we lay hands on her that she may recover in the name of Jesus. Just Lord, just like as you said in your word when Jesus sent out his disciples, that we have to go out there and we have to pray for people and we have to lay hands on people. That there are all of their afflictions. Pray on all of their afflictions, Lord, that they may recover. But only in the name of Jesus. All our cares and worries in the name of Jesus. And we pray for for Jean's niece, Alexis, as well, who is who is sick. Also, we we reach out to her spiritually as well, Lord, and we we lay hands on her that she may be healed in the name of Jesus. And we reach out to Derek, who is, who is on the street, lost, bound by alcohol and drugs, Lord, that, that you, will, you will touch his life, Heavenly Father. His mother is standing here and standing in the gap on his behalf, Lord, that through, through her, that you may reach Derek, Lord, and he will plant the seed, plant the seed in Derek that he'll... He'll hear your voice, Lord, and he will make that, that change, that change in this life. Lord, that he will turn to you and he will give your life, give his life to you, Lord. And he will make that change, Lord. And we pray for, for my community, South Lake, for the people that have perished, Lord, 
that we lost, these young people, these family members. We bind that spirit, that spirit of death. And it's going around in Sachiku Lake too in my wife's community. That spirit of death, that spirit of suicide. We bind all these spirits. We send them back to the pit of hell. Satan, we bind you in the name of Jesus. We send you back. And these sicknesses, we bind these sicknesses. We speak life to our bodies, Lord. The Holy Spirit, fill our, fill our lives, Heavenly Father. And we thank you for, for Leslie and, and Ray for, for hosting, for bringing us together, bringing together the, the ecclesia. We ask you to bless this, this building that they have acquired, Lord. We pray for a healthy a healthy atmosphere in here, a family atmosphere, God's family. We thank you. We thank you for everything, for all that you have done, Heavenly Father. We thank you and all that you're going to do. Lord, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so glad to have that.